this tradition, we welcome you at this time to this tradition and this time-honored process. Uh, we have a path uh, for you, but we know that each of you, based on your specific calling for ministry, will find a path that leads you to a way that will uh, enhance your gifts and your graces. I also want to, to pause uh, because this is a very unique uh, moment. In the audience is the chairman of the board of Hood Theological Seminary, uh, Dr. Darrell Brewster Starnes, who is himself a graduate of Hood Theological Seminary. So it is, it, is, it is most unique that he has now, in his many years of ministry, has also now moved into the role to be the chairman of the board of directors, uh, board of trustees of Hood Theological Seminary. So we welcome you here and we look forward to what, we will, what will be an enlightening and a stimulating conversation. Bless you. Good afternoon. May we all pray? Almighty God, Lord of heaven and earth, we thank you for your great love and your blessings over our lives, and we praise you for this today. I ask that you will bless our guest speaker and every participant in today's convocation. Renew our thoughts and minds and guide each student, professor, and administrator as we begin this new semester. I ask for continued grace and mercy so that your servant leaders may move fully in your blessings and, and your goodness. Father, we look to you daily to guide us in our lives. We are your vessels and ask that you would use us to accomplish your divine agenda. Give us strength and give us peace in every situation. We praise and we thank you again for granting us godly wisdom to hear your voice. And as we stand together to do your work, lead us and hear us when we pray. These things we ask in the precious name of your son, Jesus, amen. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, if you're like me, the older I get, the more I come to realize what a rare and precious thing a good friend is in this world. And it is for this reason that it is my great honor to introduce my good friend, our opening convocation speaker this evening, the Reverend Dr. Mark Conforti. Dr. Conforti received his Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Florida, his Master of Divinity from Duke Divinity School, and his Doctor of Ministry degree from Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, DC. He is author of the book, Clergy Mentoring, The Tie That Binds, and is best known to us as a part-time faculty member in the areas of pastoral theology and United Methodist studies. In the wider community and in the Western North, North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church, however, Mark is best known as the youngest person to have served as senior pastor at First United Methodist Church in Salisbury, North Carolina, an appointment he has held since 2014. Besides his academic accomplishments and ministerial appointments, Mark is known to his friends and family as a person with a wide array of interests, multiple talents, and great creativity. He is, for instance, an occasional stand-up comic, having, having performed at a number of regional comedy clubs over the years, including ones in Charlotte. He is also an avid music fan and aspiring rock and roll drummer. His podcast, Object Lesson, is now on its 103rd episode. Mark's greatest accomplishment, however, is his wonderful family. Mark and his talented spouse, Mary Allen, also a graduate of Duke Divinity School, are the proud parents of three bright and loving children, Mia, Tyler, and Connor. 
So Mark, thank you for honoring us this evening as our opening convocation speaker. And thank, thank you for being such a great friend. This virtual space is now yours. Wow, I am really overwhelmed. Um, thank you. Thank you uh, to our president, Dr. Virgil Lattimore, for inviting me to speak. This is truly an honor and a privilege. I'm so grateful. Also, thank you to you, our academic dean, Dr. Epiheimer, for that kind introduction. Uh, our friendship is certainly one of the best and brightest blessings that I get to enjoy. So here we are uh, for opening convocation, and it comes well into the start of the academic year. And that's good because we've had the chance to get started, to read, to connect with colleagues. And hopefully this time that we're sharing together now, it can serve as a way to call the community together, new and returning students, as well as faculty and staff. We need to be called together because we are finding ourselves in a most difficult time. We're on a challenging journey and still the task of spiritual formation for leadership and social transformation is ahead. That's at the heart of Hood Theological Seminary's mission. Rooted in the AME Zion tradition, continuing to bless the church as it prepares women and men for bold and creative leadership for the Christian church in a diverse world. So this convocation is calling us together. That's, that's really what the word means. But in order to be called, we need to hear the voice. So I'm asking you, have, have you heard that voice? Now, of course, when I say the voice, I'm not talking about that TV show that ripped off American Idol. I'm talking about the God who shatters the false idols of this world. Bishop Kenneth Goodson served faithfully as a pastor and leader. Interestingly, grew up here in Salisbury and grew up at First United Methodist Church, the church where I serve. That's his home church. One day, a young pastor asked, Bishop, when did you hear God calling you into ministry? Bishop Goodson responded, well, the last time was this morning. It's safe for me to claim that you are here at Hood because you heard God calling you. When did you hear that voice? How did you hear that voice? It's different for all of us. We have different stories to tell. Now, remember, the witness of Holy Scripture testifies to the power and glory of God's voice. Genesis 1 tells of God's voice creating. For you, have you heard God's voice in a, in a loud boom, shaking the rafters of your soul like Job? Maybe you heard God's voice as a still, small whisper, like Elijah. Maybe you heard that voice coming in a startling and even bizarre manner, like the burning bush for Moses. As we are, in the psalmist's words, inclining our ear to listen to that voice, there's a problem. The problem is there are so many competing voices out there in the world. Those voices bombard us every day through our phones, our computers, people we bump into at the grocery store. So many voices are giving false messages, not just because the things that they're saying are not true, but it's false because it doesn't testify to the truth. Along the way, there are so many people presuming they have a voice. People are supposing that they're experts. You know what I'm talking about. Whenever there's some sort of political story, all of a sudden, because they read a blog post, now they're an expert in constitutional law. Or a year and a half ago, they saw a news report, and now they're an expert in infectious disease. Or they claim to be an expert in the weather. The list goes on. It's a cacophony of noise. Well, I think even with all of these issues, there's a blessing for Hood Seminary right now. 
because I believe this is a place for people to hear God's voice. Now, along the way, people will hear ancient voices, such as Augustine and Athanasius. You'll hear valuable voices, such as St. Catherine of Siena or John Wesley. You'll hear pivotal voices from the 20th century, such as Howard Thurman, Jürgen Moltmann, Martin Luther King Jr. And you'll hear contemporary voices, such as Eddie Glauda, Diana Butler Bass. You'll hear your professor's voice, your classmate's voice. And through it all, it's my prayer that you hear God's voice for the sake of you coming to know your own voice. Now, over the past year and a half, as we have been meeting over Zoom, as we've been recording videos, it's given us the chance to hear our own voice. And what's that like for you? What's it like to hear your own voice? Oftentimes, we don't sound the way we imagine. I wish that I could sound like James Earl Jones, but I think I sound more like Steve Urkel. Well, there's a question that I want to ask you. It's a question that's been asked before. Perhaps you've heard it. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is there to listen, does it still make a sound? I believe the answer is no. Now, no matter if a person is in the forest or not, that tree falling, it will send sonic waves through the air. But for it to be a sound, there must be a listening ear. So dear friends, the world is listening. There are people eager and ready. And they need your voice. Seminary is providing you with voice lessons. Voice lessons to learn the melody of grace, the harmony of community, the pitch of justice, and the rhythm of peacemaking. Voice lessons for the proclamation of God's truth. Voice lessons for offering a prophetic word. Voice lessons to sing praises to the one who speaks life into existence. Voice lessons for this broken and hurting world. There's good news. There's good news because God's voice has been heard, seen, and experienced. And because of God's great love for the world, including you, God has spoken the word. That word's name is Jesus Christ. He is the Lord, the Savior of the world. Because God has spoken a word, we can come to know and experience God. Remember, Karl Barth made the clarification that when we talk about God's word, we primarily talk about Jesus. And this book that we love so much the Bible. We can call it God's Word because it bears witness to the Word. As Martin Luther said, the Bible, those are the swaddling clothes that hold the Christ child. But God's Word can also exist when God's faithful people proclaim a word that is grounded in Scripture that points to Jesus. What an opportunity! What a privilege. We might just end up sounding like background noise or more of the babble that people hear every which way they move. But it's my hope that tonight and tomorrow in our classes, throughout the rest of this academic year, as we listen to our professors' voices, as we listen to one another's voices, we listen for the voice of God because we are learning how to proclaim, learning how to sing. Voice lessons right here at Hood Theological Seminary. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Conforti. We are delighted now at this time to welcome new faces and voices to Hood this fall semester. Hood's custom is to have the entering students 
write their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. And in this virtual space, we will have you introduce yourselves. And I'll ask our registrar, Mrs. Baker, to give us further instructions as to how we will do that this evening. I believe the uh, plan for this evening is for me to read the names of students who have entered a program during this uh, calendar year. So in the Doctor of Ministry program, Lloyd Tyrell Austin, Frank Asamadu, Sharon Elaine Browning, Brenda Renee Bulger Walker, Adam Lamont China, Boris Jetton Henderson, Bernard Eugene Hudson, Major Lamar Kay, Shanetta Latello Farmer, Richard Earl Macon, Thomas Reuben Moore, Kelly W. Taylor, Edwin Robert Thomas, Terry Bernice Williams, Tiffany Caprice Williams Poshenpour, Precious Adula Wilson. And then in the uh, Master of Divinity program, Taiwan Lama Austin, Joyce Avery, Jill Marie Bergenkamp, David Michael Burton, Jean Marie Calloway, Cortez Chisholm, Donald Wayne Claude Felter, Ashley Elizabeth Decker, William Thomas Horton Diamond, Doreen Yvette Johnson, Monica H. Marshall, Rodella Rivers, Derek D. Scurry, Marvin Taylor, Sharia Disher Yates. And in the Master of Arts Chaplaincy, <clears throat> our new degree, Margaret Laverne Anderson, Michael Ben, Vanessa Holloway Lane, Jamisha Taylor Rennix. In the Master of Theological Studies program, Rodney Laws. And then the new certificate program, General Theological Studies Certificate, Christian Richard Alexander, Gail Marie Dixon. And in the United Methodist Studies Certificate program, Jason Gregor Geyer. Those are the students that have entered from January the 1st through today. And we welcome them all to Hood. <coughs> Good evening and welcome to Hood, to our um, entering students. And welcome back to the returning students and we are in the fourth week of classes. So I think we have uh, gotten used to each other by now. And we now have a rhythm of how life in hood goes. And as you all know, it's virtual life. And I want to thank um, the Reverend Dr. Conforti for that wonderful uh, message that is so fitting and inviting for the uh, student body and the hood community because we really seek to hear God's word, God's voice together as a community. So I want to highlight some of the um, activities that we hear God speaking uh, throughout the semester. And the key one is our worship time together which is every Saturday that we have classes, that uh, we have the privilege of being led in worship by the students in the preaching class, PTH 380. And uh, so, so far we have heard from, um, from the president, the SGA, and then student Cindy, and this week it will be Kelvin Freeman and his team with his theme, Your Righteous Mind. So we, we are looking forward to being blessed and challenged. And so, you know, it's virtual because our lives at this point is virtual. So go to your Facebook page, the Wood Seminar Facebook page. And I sent you a link every week 
if you click on it, it will take you there and be patient because sometimes we have some technical difficulties, but you need to scroll down until you see the life when it begins. So be patient, don't give up. Uh, it's easy. Anyone can go on this uh, Facebook live and we share in worship. So I'm looking forward to this worship time with you all and please join us. And we, you know that our offerings for this semester, because we continue the traditions, even when we are virtual, of the support we give to some charity organizations that mean a lot to uh, the Salisbury Rowan community in which we find ourselves situated, whether virtual, that's where our institution is situated. And we want to make our presence known and to make uh, God love and presence through us be seen. So this semester we are, uh, our contributions, our offerings during service will go to Rowan Helping Ministries and Prevent Child Abuse Rowan, which you can contribute through our donate button at the website, just choose chapel offerings and not just um, chapel because there's another thing there that's asking for your donations too. But on Saturday, when you're doing your offerings, please choose chapel offering. So thank you. Another thing that is so interesting about our worship time together, in the olden days when we were together, which we are looking forward to be doing in person again, we would have people share their talents. We have singers, we have uh, people who play instruments. So we still want to have that is a continuing tradition. So if any among, among the students who are gifted, talented, are willing to share uh, their, the God-given gifts in worship, please let me know. And we will know how to plug you in. Just email me and say, I want to be used by God. So please, let me know, just email me. And then um, the SGA, since we are virtual, we have a, 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 on campus, we have a neighborhood, a space that students used to gather and uh, interact with each other in a safe way. But since we are virtual, we, that space has moved to Facebook. So there is a neighborhood and this neighborhood is actually spelled with a, a capital H to represent our name, hood. So the neighborhood space. And please uh, join. The SGA wants you to join because that's where all the interaction takes place between uh, students, among students. And you, in the emails I send every week, you will find the link to do that. But also if you have questions, you can call, I think this is the president. I just got an email, an, uh, a phone number without a name. So I'm going to assume that that is going to the president of the SGA. So please do that. Um, and then in September, uh, we want to be aware of prostate cancer. And there's a link to where you can get more information and sickle cell awareness. And for those who can donate blood wherever you are, please do so because we used to have uh, blood drives during this month at, um, at the campus, but we can't. But I want you to continue this tradition wherever you will be, just if you're able to donate blood because there's a need for it. Then make sure that you, um, you visit the uh, job opportunities um, portal on my hood to find out where you can um, have openings that you can apply for jobs and scholarships. And I have highlighted some for you. And then lastly, I want you to know that we really live in a community that says every member is, a, is part of the family. So we share our concerns, we share our joys, so if you have any prayer concerns or joys that you want to share, 
that I can include on our hood community player list, please email me. I only, so far, I, those who don't know, I put only those that are in my classes because we share those in class. But please, you feel free to send me your prayer concerns. So with that, I will say, welcome to Hood. You have heard the message. We are listening to God's voice together. Thank you. Will you join us for our benediction? Father, we thank you for your voice, which has been spoken tonight through your preacher. We thank you, Lord, that in a world that there are many voices, we can hear your voice clearly if we listen and as we focus our lives on you. So, Father, I pray tonight as we leave this meeting and this space, I pray that we would listen, that we would listen to those that you're speaking through, that we might hear your message, that we might hear your call, and that we might hear your command to go forth and to share your voice through our voices with the world in which we live. Tonight, I pray for those who are uh, bereaved and who are suffering across our country and, across, and around the world uh, from losing, law, losing those to COVID-19. I pray, Father, for others who are going through tough times, for some of our students, Lord, who are struggling, and uh, at times they feel like they're alone. But let them hear your voice that your voice may be comforting and be a peace to them. Now go with us as we go forth in your name, bringing honor and glory to you. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.